How can we make a rainy day like this more pleasant? Well, for you, staying in your living room and putting out a good episode in full HD, full screen and full length. And for me, well, just using the time and driving a convertible. So a very unusual review here for you today with the VW T-Roc convertible. It has been done before, but since the Range Rover Evoque Cabriolet is now from the market, this one is the only SUV convertible on the market rear right now and the first time in the non-premium segment. There are hardly any, you know, somewhat affordable Cabriolets on the market anymore. This is now a new one with a very special concept and in this episode we are going to find out SUV and convertible and in this respect for this really car, does that work? Does it make sense? We'll find out. Exterior, interior and the driving experience already told you the catchphrase earlier, so now let's go. Here in the front now we can see there's this honeycomb structure in the front and also in the lower front. Interesting silver contrast. The LED daytime running lights are right here in the lower part. It's a beautiful way. Also full LED headlamps are available for the main headlamp unit. I've got a beautiful blue color here for you today and I mean it's always unpleasant to film in rainy conditions. Yes, but the cars look so great and with the raindrops all over the paint that's of course awesome then for you. Not very pleasant for me, but yeah, sadly the driving event was scheduled for sunny Majorca, but due to the virus it was cancelled, so we have to do it in rainy Germany at the moment, and just rainy days at the moment, so rain it is. But it's also a challenge, of course, for the drivetrain. There's no all-wheel drive available for this one here, just front-wheel drive only. And of course, well, driving with open top in the rain, is that possible? We'll find out later. This will be so much fun today, I can promise you, still, <laughs> even though the weather. The length is at 4 meters 27, 14 foot or 168 inches. So, 4 centimeters or 1.5 inches longer wheelbase than the coupe of the T-Roc. They do that because they have the convertible uh, roof stored right here and then of course the space for the rear passengers should not be that limited so they put the wheelbase a little bit longer. That's now that's possible with these platform concepts vehicles. So you can see here a Thomas blue color here very beautiful and fitting of course my would be my favorite color. They don't call it Thomas blue sadly <laughs> but you see at the moment closed top we will soon open it for you. Black roof here and 17 inch wheels, 18 and 19 are also available. They look sportier than here also with winter tires. They give you more comfort, however. Don't look that fancy, but I think it still works with the look. Of course, a sports car convertible looks somewhat cooler and fancier. But I mean, it doesn't look too different than from the Coupe because they could kept, keep this roof line here more or less with these new convertible roofs. Crossover cladding right there. Suspension wise, you can get a normal fixed suspension, a sports fixed suspension, which will be quite stiff. And then also the DCC dynamic chassis control, the adaptive suspension, which we also have inbuilt here. Let's see out how that one plays with the comfort today. And now opening and closing. It works up to a speed of 30 kilometers an hour. We'll soon also test that in uh, real road driving, of course, for you. And opening is about just under nine seconds. Please compare it in the time code below. And closing should be a little bit slower, but again, we can check the original time codes now when we do the live test. This will be very interesting. So frequent subscribers can also put the opening and closing time right there in the comments. And then there's also this button here to lower or close all windows at the very same time, like this. And when we just open it <laughs> once again, I can also do that with the open top. And I want to know from you guys what you think, how does it look better with closed top or with open top? Of course, that's you know always somehow different and always somehow special. So now also putting down the windows for you here. And here we are. And um, I think pretty cool concept. Love the soft top, brings down the weight or doesn't add some additional hard top weight, less space it stores. And of course, you can also open and close it while driving. And here have the proper wind deflector mount. This is, you know, making a huge difference. And now to the rear here with the 
LED signature. There's also the separate wing here to make it a little bit sportier looking. And the lower part, actually, yeah, you have this fake exhaust graphic. I think we could have lived without it. Real exhaust is then underneath. By the way, you can also open or close the convertible top here with the key. The secret to that is, usually it's just like holding the opening or closing button, but here, click once and then twice, you know, and then hold it and then it actually does work. So that's the trick to do that. And you have to be close to the vehicle so you cannot be too far away, you know, for safety reasons, like this. And also then, again, here when you are with the button once and twice, so click once and then hold and then it also works so for a cool show effect when you're in front of the vegan ice cream parlor so ah now it stopped i was i was holding the key too far away so i had to go with that again there we are so that's of course always pretty cool what about this wind deflector again it's really very very useful and it's easy to install and deinstall you put this one up and then you can actually you know have to lift the head restraints up first and then you can a little bit like this and put it out and there's a good storage and also in the trunk for that and you can see these mounts here they are at both sides so you have to find them right here also at the other side um, I mean easier to do it with two people but also you see here not too hard to do it alone and then you put these restraints down <laughs> once again as for engines, there's not so much choice as for the normal coupe version. Here you either have a 1 liter 3 cylinder turbo petrol engine with 115 horsepower and a 6 speed manual, or this one here today, the 1.5 liter turbo petrol engine with 150 horsepower, either also the manual gearbox or today here also 7 speed DSG and all front wheel drive. Interior now really interesting with the blue deco element. Sadly, this is then hard packing top part. That's the only thing to criticize. Compact steering wheel, digital instruments, zoom module, so that. Then we have beautiful fabric seats. And should you wonder, fabric seats in a convertible, yes, that perfectly works because they stay cool in summer and they're not too cold in winter times. And I mean, if they get wet like now, it's no problem. They dry out again when you just drive open top or closed top with the AC on so there's no problem and about stains and so on well in my convertible life there was no bird ever <laughs> pooing in my com open convertible so it never happened to me so far and the advantage of the fabric seat in climate comfort are just too good then not to have them and meanwhile they are also quite durable and there are also you know possibilities to clean them if something ever happens to that. So getting inside here is of course fairly easy and this is the cool thing about this vehicle. Um, you have an SUV convertible, you have a more upright seating position, the seating position itself is very comfortable and you have a better round view view. So I think already from the seating position it shows you that this concept here of combining compact SUV with convertible does somehow make sense if you want a soft comfortable driving experience with the convertible. Here again, first look at the steering wheel, how it can be adjusted, and the seats here in this case, then also manual, but electrical lumbar support, if you like, and also the back part here is manual. Taking a look at the interior here, we have the corresponding blue interior styling here to the exterior color. You can also get different deco elements if that's not your thing. Steering wheel quite compact, good to control. You can also adjust it in, out, and up and down, like this manual control sadly here top part is hard pack also inside of the doors that should be better even at this price point even if we're not in a super premium segment see here everything is straightforward to use manual climate units soon more to that on the left side you start with analog instruments optional these 11.7 digital instruments on the right side you either have a 6.5 inch screen or this bigger 8 inch screen but still it has in the manual volume knob and also a knob here to zoom in and out in the map. I think it's also better than having no buttons at all because they actually come quite handy, I think. Glove box, by the way, um, there's some space inside. Why not? 
steering wheel here, left side for the adaptive cruise control and controlling the volume, right side to change the views in the digital instruments or to skip the next track in the music player. And here we are with the digital instruments, a clear view and you can also change the views for example, um, that you have a little bit more space depending on what you want to have. There we go, also other contents in the middle and so on. So this is all possible. It's actually quite easy to use. Close up here on the lower climate unit, easy to control, good to have the normal knobs here and then here for the steering heat, steering wheel heating and the seat heating, both at the same button. They can control what you want to do with it in the screen. Here then for the vent strength and so on. Actually pretty easy and straightforward to use. And this is here the mode button for the DCC for the adaptive suspension. And here it goes in the screen, either when you have the DCC then you can pick the driving modes, suspension will get stiffer, steering will give you a little more feedback and so on. And then when you have here you can activate or deactivate the steering wheel heating. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's possible in all the levels of the seat heating, but it's also able to do that with the button in the lower part. So you can and also decide if you want to have just one thing, you know, activated at the same time or both at the same time. Now the infotainment up close also has this gesture function here for the main menu, but not sure if it's really that helpful, actually. GPS looks like this. So you have this, let's say, shortcut from the last destinations you've picked and then you can just click them and then let's also take a look at the normal map, zoom in and out, works quite quickly. Also, you can do that here with this zoom knob. This is also quite handy while driving, actually. So pretty clear, crisp and also straightforward. What about the app view? This is the Apple CarPlay, also available as a wireless function. Other than that, Android Auto also available, uses all of the screen. And as for sound system, it's actually um, this 400 watts, 12 speaker, optional Beats sound system. And it's actually quite good, um, quite bass heavy. So you maybe should just neutral it also with the subwoofer and so on. Um, not the best sound ever, but actually quite decent. And that you also have hotkeys here for different functions. Um, also here, the car menu is interesting to see the visualizations of the car. And they don't keep the, the color quite, but I mean, yeah, I think that's still okay. Here in selections, you can also pick some options for a digital cockpit, for example. So even more options you can put in right here. And we also have the rear view camera because the visibility is also a little bit restricted. It's good to have that definitely. And you see here the, on the left side, the helping lines also adapt a little bit. See where you're actually going from this fake drone view from above for the PDC. But then the normal rear view camera is of course the more helpful thing. And it's actually a quite okay resolution. And it's hidden in this flipped logo in the rear lower part to USB-C chargers and also inductive charging platform. That can make sense because the Apple CarPlay is also available wirelessly. Here the DSG shifting lever, then in the lower console you have cup holders. I have my garage B pair at the moment, but they are not adaptive. Hmm, maybe not the best solution here. And then there's this armrest, nice fabric cover you can put up and for some reasonable space underneath. Put the smartphone here at the moment that we didn't have so much clutter in the front. And two central buttons for the convertible, the rear one to open or close all four windows at the same time and the front one to open the roof. However, to open it, you have to press and to close pull. Mm, to me, that's not a real logical thing, but maybe it's a safety thing or something. Interesting, by the way, here in the ceiling, so there's this new mandatory SOS button, which you only press when you are in like an accident situations and so on and uh, here this middle button here since you wonder so if you deactivate that this is for the lights you know um, so if you activate it then as soon as you open the door the lights automatically go on so this digitalizes this sofa manual button you usually have on the top that right there well you flip the seat here then you can push it forward and can get in easy. Um, that's of course a little bit simpler when you have the roof opened and I mean when I would be driving like this I do not exactly fit but it would work with three tall adults when the co-driver seat is pushed a little bit more to the front and here when I'm driving if I would be sitting a little bit closer to the steering wheel so 
you see you have some possibilities yes not thought out to be you know for four tall adults all the time long trip but for shorter trips it's still somewhat okay isofix on the outside that's possible and we will be also able to flip the seats then from the rear hey, and pretty cool you have USB-C chargers here also for the rear well what about the trunk you flip the logo and then you have already bigger than with the Range Rover Evoque convertible and the length here would be 84 centimeters the lower length just 75 and the width right here is normally just about a meter and the height here total height is about 55 centimeters so it's all fine you just have this you know massive loading sill below this cover you have exact storage for the wind deflector so you can put direct design to fit in right there and then we can also flip the seats from here see here they fold directly like this and so there's a more narrow opening here but then if you load things through to the front seats you really have one meters 55 and that's actually pretty decent so can't complain about that and what about when i put some luggage in here so you see that works for a cabin trolley like this even in a vertical way so I mean, there are of course more abundant trunks on the automotive market, but considering it's a convertible, I think not too bad. By the way, when the seats are flipped, you can also do that to protect your seats in the rear. Then you could even put some more bags on it just from the passenger compartment. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the VW T Rock Cabriolet and yeah, usually we would be on Majorca on that driving event, but that was cancelled due to the virus. So we're here in Germany and it's raining. But the thing is, as I told you initially, as California, UK and Germany are the main Gabrielli markets, this is also a very realistic test. And if you're a true convertible fan, you drive in every kind of weather. And yeah, at the moment it is raining just a little bit. And now the rain is coming a little bit inside. <laughs> but as a true convertible fan, you don't care. And if it would be even colder, you would just wear a beanie. I um, also got one just right here in case I need it. <laughs> That's how you do it. And the thing is, also a rule among true convertible fans, when it's raining inside the convertible, you're just not driving fast enough. <laughs> because, you know, when it's like this at the moment, so it's, yeah, it is raining a little bit outside, but I'm basically, pushing the rain with the front windscreen you know so I'm too fast for the rain so at the moment it's now it's dry inside here as long as we're not stopping so when we're taking the next turn like don't go to red don't go to red <laughs> just keep driving keep driving so about 50 kilometers an hour is actually enough oh no traffic light jumps to red but we're just rolling out now and I do have the wind deflector mounted here you can see that and that is helping really a lot so it's actually um, you know, hardly any wind is coming here at about 50 kilometers an hour. It's really silent, um, you know, as for everything which is not, you know, convertible related. So we'll also see how that one plays out when we drive a little bit faster very soon. And of course, I'm all also like the show on the road now. <laughs> Everyone's watching like, why is this lunatic driving a convertible in the rain? And also having two cameras now. They must be thinking like, what's going on there? But I mean, you know. Some guys, of course, wouldn't recognize us when we're driving along. Then they know what we're doing, actually. And here we're lucky enough um, not to be standing still too much. And we also want to find out, since we have the DSG mounted here together with the 1.5 liter TSI, this turbo petrol engine, what about this stuttering effect that was um, actually, you know, annoying a lot of the customers from the early building stages of this engine together with the DSG? Volkswagen told us that they installed an update also an existing customer can get this update at the dealers it's a software update which should prevent that and you know so far I did not notice any um, bad behavior from the dual clutch transmission now we'll see you know we'll keep you updated about that the advantage of this is of the D, um, DSG here in comparison to the manual gearbox it's just so relaxing to drive indeed and very smoothly shifting up and down the gears really cool and especially when you are stuck in traffic situations and so on I would go for that um, 
I mean, you're also okay, of course, with the manual gearbox if you want to save some money, but automatic transmission is, of course, always more relaxing. I would also go for it. This is a relaxing convertible. And the thing is, I can already say right now, the concept of combining this compact SUV with convertible, with being a cabriolet, it's really awesome. So, yes, a sporty convertible does look better from the outside, no doubt about that. But I mean, at the moment here, I mean, even if it's raining, it's not a pleasant day at all. It's dark, it's rainy, we have about like 8.5 degrees Celsius, but still I'm totally enjoying this ride and it's comfortable, you know? So I ha have more light than I would usually have in a closed vehicle. I can still drive with the open top when it's not raining too hard. That's That still works, you see, staying relatively dry. <laughs> And the thing is, I'm sitting a little bit higher than I would be sitting in a sports convertible. It's more comfortable, I have more view, you know, I can enjoy nature a little bit more, you know, all the impressions you get from, from, from the outside here when, when you're driving along. Um, the option DCC, which is built in here, so you can get the base suspension and the sport suspension, both fixed, or the DCC, the dynamic chassis control, which is the adaptive suspension, it's doing a phenomenal job. So I can leave it here in the normal driving mode and have a lot of comfort. All the bumps are even out very well. Um, also being like, you know, leaving convertible aspect aside. Um, you know, recently had the Kia X seat review. I still have that vehicle at the moment as a comparison. So um, X seat and T-Rock in general are of course competitors. The X seat is a very, very good car as we um, recently presented to you and has a lot of strength. Um, for example, better in the exit, we have soft touch at the inside of the doors. Um, and again, for example, suspension-wise, that's also what I mentioned earlier, the T-Rock is better with this DCC, because here you can get an adaptive suspension, and then it's just evening out the pot holes better, and at the same time, it's more dynamic, and of course, you can pick the different driving modes, and then just pick your suspension behavior. So suspension-wise, this one here among the best in the compact segment overall so and um, you know it depends on the brand and the vehicle if it's really making sense to go for an adaptive suspension sometimes the difference in comfort are minor sometimes and it's especially with the VW group cars so also if you think about Seat, Skoda and Audi you should always pick the adaptive suspension because the amount of comfort you gain with that and also acoustic comfort from a rear axle is really significant so that's an option i would definitely go for so i'm really enjoying enjoying this right here steering is by the way very light it doesn't feel like let's say most natural um, but it doesn't have any dead zone it's very light to you know be able to steer in the city so that's pretty cool um, there is this dcc mode button here when i go to the sports mode for example there's a little bit more resistance in the steering wheel I can also go to this individual mode and then, for example, um, just tune the steering a little bit different. So if you say you want to have the comfortable suspension, but yet again a more, you know, more resisting or more resistance in the steering, you can go for that. And that's actually pretty cool. So I'll stick it with the comfort mode here still. Uh, when we go to the motorway, I'll put it in sports mode. And we can also show you something of the acceleration. Now also going down here and shifting down the gears. No stuttering from the DSG so far. We'll see when we approach the next traffic light. Here very well controlled to be able to control in the corner. And again, this wind deflector is everything. You know, with all convertibles, a proper big wind deflector. And you know, there are these new systems by Mercedes, you know, with this air cap system and so on. Uh, I mean, they try to replace a classic wind deflector. Um, that you can easily change, you know, people in the back that here you always have to manually install and deinstall it. Yeah, that's a little bit of work, but there's no replacement in, um, you know, better wind uh, features than having this classic wind deflector thing. So, riding with open top here is really, really awesome. And, um, you know, what I want to try is I mean, we should have both, right? Driving on motorway with open top and closed top, right? 
that would be interesting. So let's just do that, guys. So I'm going to the sports mode now, also for some acceleration. Um, rain is picking up just a little bit now. The camera is still dry. So now we're going open top, 50 kilometers, sports mode to, I think we can go to 80 here. Let's go. Plop, that this wall, yeah, well, it was already 87. So you see that went quick enough. This turbo gives me enough boost and here at about 80 kilometers an hour I can um, very well cruise with the open top. So that's no problem at all. Um, I think when this um, construction, construction uh, site here is over I can also go to 100 and then we can find out if this cruising um, uh, speed would be okay as well. What we also have here is the ACC. I can activate it here on the steering wheel. That's the adaptive cruise control. Setting the speed here with my left thumb. And then the speed is also adapted to the vehicle in front of me. Lane keeping assist is in here, of course. I'm, uh, I won't test it here inside this construction site, but can I? Let's see, now I'm alone here. That's actually also realizing that the side lines here in yellow Usually um, they're better with the white lines. And you see also keeping me centralized. I, I'm keeping my hands on the steering wheel, but I'm not doing anything, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but now it says overtake steering. So you see it also keeps me actively in a lane. That's good actually. So also good for motor weight cruising here. So I don't miss anything that would I would, uh, I would have from the T-Rock uh, Coupe actually. Um, I mean, look at that. I mean, it's raining 80 kilometers an hour, uh, below 10 degrees Celsius. All is fine here, all good. Just awesome, you know? And again, what a sh itty uh, <laughs> day it is actually today. And I'm still enjoying this ride. And that's what's making it uh, so special to have a convertible, and especially this SUV convertible. You know, when I would be in like a Mazda MX-5 or something, yeah, I would have more sporty fun, more driving fun, more agility and so on. But then again, I would have less comfort. So you always have to think about that. And it's basically a trade-off. So if you want more comfort, this is definitely something uh, you, you can go for. So let's go back to the comfort mode as well here to give it a little bit more suspension. <laughs> Some raindrops are getting inside, but I mean, I'm driving again fast enough for that. So now the construction site is getting yeah, it's getting cancelled and let's accelerate to 100, a little bit uphill, hitting it full throttle and that's it already. So see enough power also on this 1.5 and you know it's getting quite windy in here now at 100 and I mean it's a wet road, there was also even louder but um, look at my hairs which are relatively still and steady so 100 kilometers an hour is an absolute fine um, you know, commuting speed here on, on the motorway with this car. I uh, still, still keep it on the left lane, I don't get roosted from this rain in front of me. And of course we want to drive back a little bit on the motorway with close top and see how that is, um, you know, how that is rated. But again, this is an all-season convertible, we can already prove that. So actually pretty, pretty amazed, you know, so very, very cool. So let's get off the motorway here now. Yeah, everything is still quite dry in here. <laughs> it's really astonishing, really astonishing. The wind effect, I got a little bit of rain. So getting off here, also at higher speeds, the car uh, is very stable to control. Uh, this car offers a very neutral and balanced handling. So let's close the top right here. Yeah, that works also with the camera. And it's, you know, quite quickly. So uh, I think closing was a little bit slower than opening it was. I could also roll during that, you know, so it's not really needed that I need to stand still. This red traffic light phase was a good, you know, opportunity to do that right now. Now we drive with closed top. Oh, and we hear that, you know, <laughs> the drops on the, on the roof. So we really know how hard it is raining outside actually. So it was actually, Good decision to do that right now. Front wheel drive only, by the way, but since we don't have so much power, it's also okay. You don't 
know, really miss the all-wheel drive here, which you could optionally go for with the Coupe. They wanted to keep the price low and also the model line up a little bit simple. So they're only offering these two different engines, a one liter TSI three cylinder and this 1.5 liter TSI four cylinder. This one is also optional with the automatic gearbox we have here. And so far, again, satisfied with it. It seems that the software updates or the newer versions, I mean, I can't really say that um, when they do the software update of existing engines of that, that it has the same effect than it would be the very, you know, the latest build of that, which is having this software from works. Maybe that's still a difference. I don't know. Can't really um, prove that. But so far, no problems here. Um, I'll also keep you updated um, when I experience any more problems, maybe in the af after recording here or something. Um, yeah, let's see about that. But here again, good drive. I think the engine is actually very suitable to the car. Would the one liter three cylinder also be enough Good question, good question. The car is not heavy, so it can actually be enough when you don't really push it, you know, and when you really want to save some money, are happy with the manual gearbox. It also has a turbo. When you have the budget, I would advise you to go for the 1.5 because you don't need to run it at so high RPMs and so on, you know, so that's a little bit more relaxing, so to say. Now at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour with closed top and again, there are the raindrops you maybe also hear now on the recording on the camera, but this roof has a very good insulation, multiple insulation layers, and it's really very silent in here. That's pretty cool. So if that would be any concern to you, um, not going for the coupe, I think it's absolutely fine. Usually with nowadays um, very well-built convertible tops, the differences are rather when you go in like 140, 160 kilometers an hour. The question is, you know, how often are you doing that and in this, this special car, you know? So that would not be, um, you know, a real deciding factor to me, actually. So also here with closed top, pretty cool. Now also this um, sailing is, by the way, activated. So this DSG says Freilauf here in German. Very interesting. Oh, oh, I did this mistake just recently because they uh, changed it here with the yellow lines. Now I'm going to another braking maneuver. Again, very smooth and neutral handling with this vehicle. See also when I'm rolling, actual cute. There are two cylinder modes, so it's cylinder deactivation. It says two cylinder mode and most of the time zero consumption when I'm just rolling. Yeah, traffic light turns red and CC. Any stuttering? No, that was fine again, you know. So that was a, you know, also smooth stopping process. No problem at all. It seems to be that in this um, newer versions, it is actually fixed. Now, let's say you're really cold in winter. And I mean, there are some convertible days in winter, um, for example, um, like it's sunny, but very cold, for example. And then you can activate seat heating and also the heated steering wheel. That's of course an awesome function. Um, it is one button here actually, as I showed you earlier, together. And then when you hit it again, you control the level of the seat heating. And you can also, that in the screen, deactivate the steering wheel heating if that's not something for you. And off and say, yeah, that would be the thing, you know, when I just activate the steering wheel heating, that's also possible. And, actually quite a lot of times that's actually what I do so um, you know quite often I have like cold fingers but everything else is fine so um, sometimes I just activate the steering wheel heating and that's actually it so and yeah just cruise control 50 and so on and that would be you know also compared to compared when you're driving like 80 90 kilometers an hour like 60 miles an hour or something this is a region where a combustion engine is most efficient and then usually we end up with about seven liters on one kilometers um, as fuel economy and when you're really keeping it cruise control steady in you know less city driving then you can also score some better economy figures and again when you really push this car here high speed 
then you're really um, exceeding it. So um, at the end of the conclusion, I will also give you another update when I finish my ride here today. What about the you know, realistic fuel economy figure when we're driving rather steady? Because usually we want to you know, state this figure um, to see you know, what would be one of the, let's say, minimum consumption figures. Um, and then go you go higher, of course, when you have like you know really pushing it more city traffic and so on. Now let's try to open it while driving at 30. That works. So 30 kilometers does work, and here we are again. <laughs> Almost opening it while driving. That's so much fun. Really amazing, and we have a lot of light here in the interior once again really awesome let's try to close it again um, let's see because you know effective test is always good at 35 speed to high so limit here is the 30 kilometers an hour you know there are convertibles which have this 50 kilometers an hour limit I think with 30 you can you know you can easily live with that so no problem at all um, you know sometimes when you get a little bit slower and then just roll absolutely fine with me so, very interesting ride here today. Tell me your comments about this driving experience. And now to our conclusion for today with the Volkswagen T-Roc Cabriolet. Does this concept work? Yes and totally. Really surprised it does make a lot of sense because not everyone wants to go for a sporty convertible. Yes, sporty driving is fun. And this one still offers some agile driving feeling because it's a very neutral handling, a very good platform. It's not too heavy as for the weight, but it just delivers you more comfort with this upright seating position. And it's just so much fun to drive, sitting a little bit more upright. You can enjoy more of the nature impressions and so on. To me, it totally makes sense actually for more convertible fans than actually it would be for the sporty driving, I think. Well, having both is of course pretty cool, maybe like with the MX-5 Miata and the Euro convertible in the garage, if you can afford that. But again, this is also a good point. Hardly any more non-premium convertibles on the market. So, you know, Audi, Mercedes, BMW offer a lot, but everyone else, hardly any um, left on the market. So it's very good to have this new offering then here on the market. Exterior, I mean, it looks kind of fresh, not too different from the Coupe version. Yes, of course, it doesn't look the sportiest and the coolest if you compare it to a very sporty convertible, that's clear. 17-inch wheels here, by the way, today is very good for a comfortable riding, and it was a very comfortable ride. Not too soft or something, but the DCC, the adaptive um, suspension, did a great job. And again, 17-inch wheels is the choice for the most comfortable ride. And it doesn't look too bad at all. I mean, it doesn't look super sporty at all. So I think you can also live with 17 inch. If you want a sporty look, you can also go with 18 or 19 inch wheels. Then again, maybe losing some of the comfort because of less tire. Um, but then again, a bit of suspension might also even that out just a little bit. And interior wise, we see a very good build quality and everything is rather straightforward and easy to use. Yeah, with the exception that we could have wished for some soft touch material here at the inside of the doors, you know. It's not, you know, you know, processed in a bad way, but just that there would be soft touch material, I think we can expect it also here um, from this price. Yeah, they want to keep the price low a little bit, but I think this is something still um, that Volkswagen should actually have or offer. Other than that, I think it's a very good and functional interior and also very comfortable as for the seats. Again, the fabric seats are also the way to go for, even though it's inconvertible, it stays cool in summer and also is not too cold in winter times. So really awesome choice here, also with the styling and so on. So actually I would pick the car exactly as we have it here at the moment. Also with the 1.5 TSI, there were no stuttering problems or whatsoever here in combination with the DSG gearbox and the power is really sufficient and already there. Of course, very relaxing with the automatic gearbox to have. You could go for the smaller engine if you want to save some money. And then sometimes you have to push it a little bit more, especially when you want to go some like overtaking maneuvers on the motorway and so on. But if you have a little bit more budget over than the 1.5 TSI, I will be a little bit more calm to drive. And you can drive it open top all the time. 
yeah, even though also when it's raining, at least when it's not too harsh in the rain, and even, you know, 100 kilometers open top is no problem, especially when you have this big wind deflector mounted right there. So overall, I think a really awesome vehicle. I just love the concept. Um, stands for a lot of driving fun and just, you know, like some automotive enjoyment. By the way, a fuel economy figure, a realistic one would be seven liters on more kilometers, 35, uh, 34 MPG US. Or about 41 mpg uk so what do you think guys tell me your comments about the vwt rocker convertible and also see you next time